for illumined life to be birthed into form. I am the truth. I am the life. So hello there beloved ones and welcome to this video with me here today once again. So by now I should have thought of that the transgression work, right? And its release and its realization and all the awakening awareness should be done by now and yet it wasn't so. So I actually realized yesterday, oh, there's a video part five coming up and um, you know, my favorite motto as of the late is it is what it is. So I'm here with all of you. Um, as you see me right now, happy, excited, glowing, looking at the sun. However, the story and what I had to witness and experience in this human body is not like that at all. <laughs> so I've shared a lot of the things and realizations that came through me as each transgression layer and wave was released through my physical body. And today I want to actually encapsulate upon this. I want to put the epitome, um, the tower of magnificence on, you know, on all of these puzzle layers and puzzle pieces that have been revealing themselves through me in this final culmination, which means tracing the transgression origin all the way to its source, which is the creation level. So let us begin. What actually occurred, right? I've shared with you how on my birthday, the solar return this year in September, on the 15th, there was suddenly like an overriding, overarching presence and wave. And there was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could choose. This was actually um, in the history of my 38 years here on Earth was the worst solar return I have experienced um, because it was just like this deepest synthesis I could have imagined. And there wasn't much I could do. As you know, I have talked to you before how the Illumin family of light is basically by reading these impulses through my body, they're studying them and they're getting to the core of the matter and how to basically act on the behalf of the physical human beings because we are part of this Elohim creation and as they're spiraling upwards, as the primordial Elohim spiral upwards in their ascension spiral, so do all of their creations, which is all of us. As the firstborn of the Elohim, as the child of Oreya here in the human form, I was actually the only one who went under this or through this directly and witnessed all of this as I was shown um, just through this latest experience that no one on earth before witnessed the darkness and experienced the darkness so deep and all of its workings and scheming and plotting and vicious plans of distorting the God code as I have. No one went as deep. And as you know, we know a lot of people now talk about dark versus light, the battle of good versus evil or the Christ versus Antichrist. But what we did and what I was doing and what the Elohim were creating through me was a complete understanding of a very specific fragment of darkness that wants to artificially construct and design life by hijacking the code of union and put it into their own inception. I'm going to talk about this today, what this means and what it is and how for them, this unravels. Um, so in the new age, you often have this understanding. This is what I want to talk about first. This dark and light presented to us as the same as yin and yang and saying we all have dark and light within us. No, you know, from the point of creation, um, there was this original conception point that everyone can choose to manifest their sovereign God self through the path of illumined light or the path of darkness, which is the absence, right, of that light, sorry. So that initial original point was chosen eons ago at the very start, right? And beings have been choosing ever since and creating their extension through how they create life. And we've talked about this before, how those of the fallen nature or those who have fallen from grace have eliminated themselves from the divine trinity of life. And just recently, um, I've recorded a full 
explanation of the creation story and the primordial Elohim on my Patreon page at the galactic uh, third tier mastery level. And I won't go into that specifically here. Um, so it was chosen, right? And beings who were serving through what we call this womb of life, they chose the illumined pathway. And these beings were always very loyal to God, the very nature of God and what God is, as this infinite hub of, of nothing but pure love. So, you know, oftentimes there is also a distortion of what we talk about as hierarchy, right? Spiritual hierarchy. And a lot of people in the New Age would say there is no such thing as higher or upper or lower, um, higher beings, where lineages, lesser lineages. It just doesn't exist. However, it does exist. And some beings on the planet are part of these royal lineages. They are their descendants and some beings are not. That doesn't mean in any way, shape or form that God is selective. What this means is, I'll try to present this before I go into today's topic from a very high God-like perspective. So how these royal lineages or structured hierarchies from a Godhead perspective are created, they're self-created, they're self-born, which means it's not that God chooses and chooses some and not the other. God simply creates extensions of themselves, right? God creates, like God is this infinite essence force of life. And those first in the line as the primordial Elohim had the choice, right? So some have remained faithful and loyal to God since the very beginning of the dawn of time and some haven't and they have chosen to fall. So even those who were loyal to God, right, in their selfless service work, some were more loyal and more service oriented. They were more loving of God than others which we can simply say some beings love God more than others. You can now see on earth as everyone who are descendants of the primordial family of light still carries this division within themselves, which we say some beings just love God more than others, right? That's where you see some of us slaving and toiling and doing nothing but constant self-service work for God because we love God so much. Because we're direct replications of what truly the, the God code as the Elohim family of light and the principle of life and life giving is. And because of these um, communal exchanges and devotions to God, some beings deserved to be higher or closer to God, which is themselves creating that. It's not like God chose it and said, these yes, these no. It's not a hierarchy in the order from a position or entitlement. It is a self-born, self-created or self-inflicted choice that was there and always is and it always exists since the beginning of time. And so anyone can, through their own devotions and demonstrations of this godly love or this illumined love, demonstrate themselves, apply themselves through God and serve through the essence of their inner Christ flame and hence grow up in the ladder of closeness to God, the proximity to God. While some beings are kind of like getting further away from God and this is how royal lineages are created. It's those with the same visions and efforts and devotions to God coming together in the sameness and likeness of one name, which is the resounding name of our one beloved God, the only one that is. Also, um, how God creates, as you know, God is just this infinite life. It can't create like out of itself <laughs> directly. So it creates indirectly by creating these extensions um, of itself, which means all these beautiful lumen light beings are extensions of God. They're creating the creations, moving them forward through this lumen union and lumen love, and then bringing them back to God. And through this, the heart and mind of God grows. In that growth of all this service work, all this delivering being brought back to God, God expands. And each time a new creation aspect of God grows and creates a new creation cycle. And hence God is almighty, all powerful, not just, be, not just because God is the infinite essence of all life, but because the direct descendants of God always bring that love back to God, bring that to the source of life. They create from the essence of life and then bring the creations back to the source where all life begins. That's how God multiplicates and in a way creates through a lumen union, always knowing more about itself. Hence, these beings and extensions know more about themselves as well. So it's in the image of likeness they create. In the opposition of the fallen beings who do no longer create that way, they create in a way that 
they basically create a cloning they create through cloning which is like self-replicating process because of course they no longer go and move into unions right represented with the vesica pisces formation they are not moving into unions through love they've excluded themselves from that love they only grew into power that was their only facet and focus and they grew so much in power that yes they became very powerful beings but that's the only focus they basically grew into so without love you can't move into union and without the union you can't triangulate which means you can't create in accordance to divine law and principle of divine trinity of life god as mother father and holy christ moving through beings who are creating these unions the sacred beings the elohim beings they create everything uh, beings extensions of themselves realms by moving into their unions in this heroes gamos um, sacred couplings the spirit unions and creating with the sacred merge creating further divisions of themselves which then move into life giving the breath of life to their creations and then enjoying and basically guiding their creations until they move back to them become as equally powerful in love in union and equally serving the divine godhead that's the nature of the primordial elohim and that's the way life was designed since the very first origin point and we really can't trace life as far enough but to just understand the basic principles of this creation story. So I further explain this and how the Elohim and the primordial Elohim have been functioning and what was the greater process, the higher perspective on my Patreon page. So I won't go into that. Now let us move into this last chapter of the transgression story that revealed itself to me. So as you know, um, as I said on my soul return, this huge wave of transgression started to release itself from my body again. And I was doing and i'm still doing daily sessions constantly and it got to a point where these physical pains especially here i remember the left side and my head and the teeth and the jaw and this cheekbone and the head they got so painful again and this pain is unlike any other pain you can experience on earth i've explained this before it feels very metallic it feels electric and it basically completely exhausts the nervous system so you can imagine me doing all this work mission completion sharing sessions all these things it's very hard for me to actually attain that all of that as a human because i'm already so wired in the sense that my nervous system has been so depleted because of this heaviness that's been incepted into me right so i was experiencing actually this huge wave of pain which made me go outside and i was hugging this tree just asking the tree for divine mercy to help me release some of that burden some of that energy into the or through the elemental nature of life and i was there like a mad woman praying and praying to god and when i got home i used actually my orgasmic cultivation to magnetize my body to dispel or discharge these electric particles that are actually they have a very detrimental effect to the nervous system so you can imagine there's so much heat and pain coming through my body when these waves are being released so what took place then later that evening i was on a phone um, with my friend with my fellow creation angel companion and we were randomly talking about something and she started because she's a seer she sees lots of symbols and some of them are constant in the way they're being presented to her through her consciousness and she mentioned something about always seeing the symbol of the dove but also now working with the symbol of the rose and the moment she said that like something went off in my consciousness like a trigger which was probably an impulse that my family of light already placed into me and it was like her saying those words that got me to suddenly realize of course symbols you know and just like the family of light we work with specific light filled symbology and these symbols have been exist in existence since the eons of time uh, symbols right divine archetypes of god um, sound and songs because each creation angel has actually sung into life so we have an accompanying song and a light language that we each speak directly um, so I realized in that instant it was like an instant knowing of course you know i need to access the symbol that was behind the work of what they incepted into me there was this false transgression this uh, dark imprint you know they were trying so hard to move through me and mine my body for information you know to access this divine god intelligence because of course i'm this powerful elohim creation and who else right they knew who has the information who has everything they need to get to the root of what i'm holding and what aurea and aureon have created through me so basically um i simply had this insight we need to do a session and i need to ask the question so we went into a session and I immediately invoke God as this all-loving, all-powerful presence. And 
affirming my loyalty and servitude to God, nothing and no one else. And I said, God, I just need to witness this. So I asked the question, where's this coming from? And we trace the origin in the first vision my friend was seeing was like a necklace of pearls being like torn apart, you know, basically um, my consciousness. And then she saw a diamond again being fragmented and all these pieces I was kind of trying to pick up, you know, that that was the work I was doing for the last few years. And in those pieces, she saw those fragmentations and they were using the reversals through these fragmentations to access me. And she saw them like poking me in the eye, you know, for me to not see. And although everything was there, it was always rightfully belonging to me because it was mine. They were just stalling, right? They were, they were kind of stalling in my progress. So I couldn't access this and I couldn't access the full Elohim source code that I was birthed through in this life. And I exist in, in this life in creation as direct child of Aurea and Auron. Okay, so they birthed me, as I explained before, to the sacred heroes Gamos Union, and hence I always had their love, this deep love of the Elohim nature and how this is a creation born love. This is not an individual personal love. Even when I use the words unconditional love, I feel it differently than the majority of the humans using that word. It's really like this overarching presence of love that moves into life and creates life and wants to give life. It wants to give the sustenance of life to all even who are still wondering and lost and not seeing and not feeling the love even. But that was not the primordial mission, right? That was just who I naturally am. That's my purpose. But the mission with transgression we had, I'll explain now. So the moment we saw that vision, I asked, okay, I need to ask a deeper question. And I asked the question, God, show me the symbolism behind the inflicted pain and everything they've been putting in my body that did not originate from my immaculate Elohim design of life. And she immediately gets the answer, only she can witness and access this herself. And uh, okay, we move further, uh, we cleared the space, there were some dark presences there. We've cleared the room, we've done it through sound, uh, using light language. Then we move and we entered into this clear room. I asked the question again, I do a quick prayer invocation, and immediately I see the symbol. Um, was very disgusting and appalling because the symbol I saw being moved into me and through me and the symbol that these um, beings use was the symbol of what we know, you know, like in our realm as the Rubik's Cube, you know, consisting of these different colors and then you just like a riddle, you need to kind of solve it, right? It's like this solvable riddle for you to um, solve. And the first insight was, you know, that was their gift to humanity, gift, quote unquote, because, you know, we always say, well, the science types, they always have these, you know, um, equations and, you know, cubes and all these things. Um, so anyway, you know, there was no coincidence why when I was moving through the darkest level of transgression in this winter timeline, I rewatched the entire um, the Big Bang Theory show. I know it's a funny show and, and yeah, it in a way it did entertain me because I was very down in the dumps at that time. But it also showed me things because, you know, they're always writing these equations on the board. And if you remember at that time, I had to unveil a lot of these missing puzzle pieces. And one of them is kind of like, you know, Elohim, direct incarnations. We don't exist in the astral. So they created like picking up on information on me. They used um, the mining of who I am and in this body, they use this information to create me or replica versions of me and they put them falsely in the astral. That was really tricky for them to decipher. Um, and the second point, I saw these equations and they show me, right? And in one of the visions I saw, there was equation that existed with the, um, you know, what's the called? Um, ah. The, the square root, right? The square root. And clearly they've showed me how this is false. And all mathematics based on the square root and the fragmentation is basically the, the math of fragmentation. It's dark, it's fallen math. Um, true light or illumined mathematics is, you know, the, the Fibonacci segments, the flower of life, the, um, you know, those um, divine bodies. You know, we have the dodecahedron and all of these um, sound, sulfidio frequencies, uh, rife frequencies, all these things. That's actually divine mathematics and it's illumined. And all these things they actually teach us in school, they're fallen. And when they write these equations, right, I talked about this in the video produced as my heart labor back then in, in the in the cell or apartment, you know, um, I had to witness a lot of these distortions, but they actually, you know, what I needed to work with now was, was this distortion of the ancient symbol that was behind this transgression. So I saw this black looking, uh, it's like many, many fragmented pieces, like, compo like composed of like 
infinite amount of pieces that was the, that was the cube it looked like that you know it's like infinite pieces pieces of puzzles to solve and it was like riddle after riddle after riddle so when they put the symbol into my creatrix they basically created me as i've shared this with you before like um, always needing to solve puzzles like i was basically uh, slaving for them you know they used me for that kind of amount of you know light they can use it and a lot of this was done um, just in picking on my energy, just using my energy for that. Like I didn't live my life and solving equations. You know what I mean? It was literally all the energy went into that and they were using so much life force and they were like taking this life force while simultaneously trying to get to the seed of life. The next thing I saw was that actually behind this cube was a name. I'm not going to speak that name because that name is pure evil and it's not for everyone to witness here. But there was a phonetic name pronunciation that I got instantly. And that name, basically, the moment I said it a few times and basically my friend helped me to clear because there was a lots of anger coming through Aurea, you know, like speaking when Aurea speaks through the dark, she uses a light language that is basically their own reflection. So she needs to talk to them at their level. So this kind of exhausts my, my body. And then my friend spoke her lumen light language to me to kind of soften the blow or soften the experience um, in the next segment right I saw this being traced all the way to the origin of that being so the being who invented this and it was actually an archon you know there's this huge archonic powerful being and that name that he gave to that cube or his creation that cube right the, the puzzle pieces of infinite puzzle pieces to solve was his ingenious however not illumined creation and he almost like i saw that being like this giant brain in this universe and because he's so powerful he needed an equally powerful being but we as primordial elohim we're powerful through our union we're powerful in understanding of divine trinity of life and our union and the love we hold and that being, of course, is none of that. So the moment I traced the origin back to that uh, creation angel, which was a fallen creation angel being, sorry, oh, something in my eye, just in time, right? <laughs> and what happened was I realized in that instance, of course, all the other beings I traced to the origin to, you know, when I got this uh, Castor Pollux constellation and all these experiments, they were like lesser uh, experiments or lesser representations or you know like enslavement aspects that that being just holds like puppets on a string through its control but that being in itself i had to trace the origin of my transgression to that being like a huge fallen being so through that name spoken through that cube um i've traced it back to to the origin of that being this evil being then the next step i saw i channeled it instantly was like of course i know what they're trying to do because already back uh, last year uh, when in the fall we've gotten again to our magical portal place I got this guidance that these beings are actually trying to recreate like organic have organic have you know this this intelligence they call intelligent life but it's not really um, these body avatars so they could like become embodied in a way right they would create these like a uh, cloned soldier aspects of themselves it's really dark you know I don't really want to go into it because it's very um, it's disgusting literally what I was seeing but the most disgusting aspect was when I traced their, their their plan of what they were trying to do in accessing my seat of life so you know the Elohim we create everything through life giving birth principle through our unions like Aurea out and move into union and create something right then this is how I came into being their love child they're basically the direct incarnation right moving into human form so these beings who are no longer part of these unions they don't use the love principles they don't join into unions and co-create and move into trinities um, what these being wanted to do at this creation fallen level he wanted to take the code of our union and put it like rip it out and kind of like like almost steal it steal the code and put it into a singular cell because they exist in singularity they no longer exist in this unified polarity i've used that term for years it's not the same as duality it is called unified polarity that's the code for union so because i have such a strong direct connection because i was born or birthed through this union that being tried to take that and put that into the singular cell imagine what that could have meant for the entirety of creation because with that code they could easily self-replicate and create clones and divisions of themselves throughout the universe and i don't know ruling over whatever or not um at this point i want to say i'm not making these things up because yes as a human being i'm very playful i have a huge imagination 
but my imagination is always playful uh, those of you who know me personally you know that i i get scenarios and playful imaging and stories i do not however as a human being hold imagination that could scheme that kind of level of imagination and you know making these things up it literally exists and i know for a lot of people it's hard to hear about these things imagine how difficult it is for lumen light beings who are so tending to their creations they're, they're loving their creations they put love into everything they do and create and imagine how it is to realize and understand there's like fallen beings who want to steal that and use it against god so of course Aurea Auron had to create me and it's the typical classic scenario right go to the past in order to save the future because remember last year when I almost died when I first witnessed transgression and it's happening through my body um, my beloved Auron at this uh, highest level he came in essence and he showed me it was in our realm but then he showed me like looking through a looking glass he said look beloved this is what's at stake remember I shared this before with you and he showed me this almost like a inorganic artificial intelligence moving and even moving and penetrating through wanting to penetrate through our realm because if they get to the code right and they manage to find an inception point and how to work with their code through singularity then they would create a basic distortion so the moment i realized that i was witnessing and i said to the being you are witnessed and you are witnessed and we have a witness not just me that was my beautiful creation angel friend so we witnessed that and she was so selflessly serving me and loyal and she said her own prayer to god then after i did the prayer which was basically an invocation for god now to deliver this body because i've witnessed it to the core level i had to take this transgression completion to the core level and when the human witnessed that you know the human liberates as well not just these higher levels so they needed to do this in the human body because remember the human is the key they always said what we do with our creations through the body that's the aspect they wanted to hijack because they wanted to do that they wanted to bring that to the embodiment level right this being and all of its manifestations many many beings that are a creation of that ingenious but fallen being right um so i did this invocation to god god is only one god is all powerful holy light we serve you beloved god now you witness this you handle this we now surrender you to god we did this prayer and then my friend as a loving devotee to me and my life is so loving of me no one ever showed me that devotion in this life before such loyalty and i'm very grateful for it and honored to have it finally in my life and she prayed to god to be shown you know what kind of work she could do with my body to assist my body because obviously it still exists you know in these times when this comes up in, in chronic pain and even my own family of light doesn't have the answer for you know how long these pains would endure even though we've we've done most of this work uh, no one basically has the answers because you know material realm uh, this physical body form in 3d density is still very unpredictable so as you know my narrative my moving towards is a lumen ascension it's the spiral of ascension so i passed on these recent teachings um this month on patreon on all the levels there was a channeled automatic writing i did for the equinox with the entire description of the ascension process in the body what we need to do now at this point those of you who are game and are moving towards a lumen ascension i don't know any other kind of ascension um i know a lot of people talk about different like rainbow ascension this and that you know like um recently my friend reminded me of the fact that some people are claiming these prophecies by saying things like oh it's just the last level of darkness and then it's over you know and we're all going to be in this rainbow light whatever um let me just tell you one thing i come directly from my lumen family and we don't know what's going to happen because literally we're just witnessing creation as it unfolds because there's so many aspects it's so complex even Jesus told us this information quite a while ago. Um, no one of us, even illumined beings, we don't have the full vision of God. We don't know like, oh yes, this is how it's going to happen. So imagine people on earth who are these false prophets claiming all these things and saying, yeah, that's how it's going to happen. It's just last cycle, last wave, and then it's all over. Be very careful of that um, because you can't know. <laughs> and no one at the human level knows that. So they're probably themselves being deceived through false light. The only thing you need to know is your focus, is where you want to be stop focusing on the collective you know i'm talking about the the greatest evils in in this universe in order to get you to understand yourself that eventually everyone will have to meet both light and dark within themselves which is not the same as the existing principles of yin and yang yin and yang is the potentiality of life force in which it expands itself by creating more life dark versus light like we experiencing it in this realm right doing dark deeds 
doing light deeds has nothing to do with that. People say, oh, it's normal that this exists because it is created in the yin and yang principle. Yin and yang principle of creation of God has nothing to do with the way light and dark actually manifests. You can't mistake a yin and yang for, you know, light and evil or Christ and antichrist. It's not the same thing. You better wake up from that delusion, okay? Um, it's when you don't know anything about creation laws and principles. You're actually ignorant and then you're applying things and putting them in boxes that don't, they don't even belong to, basically. So you got to get really straight with yourself and uncover all this BS because it's not the truth. And you have to only know where you stand and what you want to do is your inner work and where you want to go next. And whether you want to follow the spiral of ascension or whether you want to stay in this constant trials of tribulations of, you know, evil and darkness that, you know, it hijacks basically everything that it's not aware of what this darkness is. And hence, all my legacy in this realm, you know, before I'm complete and move on, and, you know, a lot of us are ready and we will move on to the next ascended realm in times to come. Um, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And that's what my training was here for, to assist you on this path, to help you become more discerning and alert and undergo your own training because you can't ascend into the golden spiral without knowing what's actually going on. And growing in your power of love to overcome just about anything and the reason why lumen light beings are so powerful is because they access god directly because they themselves are so close to god they've never abandoned god that's why god never abandoned them or us i'm gonna say us because that's me as well it's me in the first front line and i know who i am and i will never again in this life belittle or you know demean myself in any way that this what i'm saying is me putting myself on a pedestal no not at all. I just really know who I am and what I serve. And that what is, is God. First through my Illumined Union team. And then God directly. There's nothing in between us and God. There's no agendas and distortions. But what we go through and what we're shown through God. And what we need to then, you know, walk into with our loving service missions. is like we can't predict things. We can only lovingly serve and then allow God to do the rest. And whoever claims the opposite is a false prophet. Because I never talk about the things that I myself don't know. So just like my friend figured out and she said, you know, with all the people I'm watching, they're all sharing like this looping, constant mental things that, you know, when I grow, no longer resonate with me. But yours is like timeless because it's the truth. That's what illumined light is, my beloved. It's, it's the truth. You can't distort the truth. But how things unfold in densities and realms, you can't prophesize in advance and claim yourself this way because you're being deceived. Oh, but maybe these people need to believe that because someone needs to hold a positive space. This is not about positive versus negative. It never was. This is about truly awake and truly aware or sleeping. Truly with God or half-half, unchosen. <laughs> People in the gray zone. Um, <laughs> you know, when well, we, we use the term gray ETs and these things, well, people in the gray zone are in a fast, accelerated, fast forward track towards becoming just like these beings because we're all witnessing now on our planet this consciousness is already expanding its tentacles. And a lot of people, we used to know, and now we go to stores and grocery stores and we witness people becoming more and more robotic. And don't tell me you yourself haven't witnessed that yet. And it's just grown and enlarged itself after the V thing. And it's expanding and it's rapidly expanding and it's irreversible. There's nothing you can do. So the only thing now we need to be focused on is what you want to create, whether you want to ascend within the golden spiral or not. And ascension is only a lumen ascension. There is no other ascension but a lumen ascension. Otherwise, it's, it's a trick. I don't know what realms, I know there's many realms that exist, but a lot of them are just replicas. And even this matrix, it's like it's hollow. It no longer knows how even it got into existence. That's why it's difficult to dismantle it because you can't trace its source. Um, so we have to leave these things up to themselves. That's what God will handle. What illumined beings and what you as a devotee of the illumined path, if you truly are, have to focus on is yourself. Drop all the, the words like collective and, you know, I need to do this. I need to go to this job even though I hate it. You know, I'm in this relationship. It feels so faded. Drop these things. Free will, fadedness, um, need to, have to. 
and embrace the lineage because anyone can join and become a part of what we call the royal lineage. The royal lineage simply means beings who selflessly serve God, like many of the Christ path have been and have been serving this path. So this was me lovingly witnessing and documenting my entire transgression journey. I don't know if there's something more popping up. I hope not because my family told me just a few last waves and then you're fully free. And I'm actually looking forward to this liberation as nothing before in my life actually so in a way it was like a curse i got this last wave release for my birthday but in a way it was a blessing because you know let's just be over with it and done and it was a lot of pain i was in because this is the kind of pain you know you can't just take a pill and it's and it's done it's really difficult to be in that much pain and you know my friend was the only one who saw me and said with with all this pain and being homeless for that almost over a year and with all the things you had to go through and the terrible loss of money and the system and trying to run you down completely and pushing you into the, the poverty timeline and you still did the work you still were showing up recording documenting patron you know all the things i was i was dropping the seeds i was dropping the seeds of not just wisdom but the work that you can do to get ahead to join the golden spiral of ascension and of course you need to do the inner work of body mastery because every one of us now needs to access the Elohim seed of life in order to awaken that principle of life within us so that you can ascend and we each do that individually no one can do that for us so if you can if you have at least any space um, to give or to offer to yourself you can join my patreon page there's three tier levels I already um, told you um, the, the easiest things I do all my spirit drawings that are channeled information about the Illumin path that's quite extensive too and sometimes these grids that I offer to channel ascension updates you can access that at the first level and then the second level is more like Illumin Union and be Beloved path kind of understanding that and do these Illumin Union readings while the third level is you also get these galactic updates higher you know and ascension uh, courses and transmissions and just recently we did this golden spiral of ascension transmission with the ascension exercise that's probably one of the most important things i ever channeled and it's our direct pathway towards ascension and ascending within our bodies because our Illumin Elohim seed of life already holds everything within itself it's basically everything and it overruns any darkness uh, any programs uh, inception points but we need to do the work so my beloveds that was my transgression journey completion and i know it's part five now and i've documented it well and i think i have those of you who still probably are tongue-tied and you think what the heck i don't even understand what she's talking about try to not understand with your mind please move into the heart and know that this being this being this polona the human has been through so much in the last few years and everything i did was for god and to serve those aspects that are Elohim children which is probably a lot of you also here watching and it was done for God but it was also done for all of you who are of God and you are remembering your roots and your divine ancestry and lineage and joining more and more of these sacred fellowships that are about serving the God and the nature of the Christ as it walks this plane as well not just in the ascended the already ascended realm so Go deep within your heart. Find that space of resonance in your heart. Don't try to understand. Just acknowledge, okay, these things exist. I don't need to understand them. I just need to witness them because Polona Aurea already told us that we're gathering as many witnesses that we can at this time and this point. And I know most people will just brush this off like, you know, then I would ask this one simple question, my beloved. Then why are you even here watching if you're mocking this? Those of you who are here watching and constantly drawn and pulled in for more and more, there's something stirring up deep inside you and I know that. And I know for a fact that that Illumin Seed will grow one day. So if you want to join me on Patreon, I will be gladly opening my door. There's, my door is always open, as you know. And um, I hope this was like the, the tip of the iceberg, the topping point, that finally in my life I get to have some rest and some replenishing and my nervous system can actually come down because I would need lots and lots of self-care to actually remedy, not medicate, but remedy myself. Um, also, I would like to invite you to consider taking the courses. There's a Divine Bliss package on my page, which consists of Tantric Life Force Mastery, the Cosmic Dance and the Cosmic Orgasm, which help you to make your body more magnetic and follow through the feminine principle of life and life giving. And I just want to share at the end, the last few words. These words were Jesus's um, sacred words to me in one of our healing sessions he basically uh, created like this focus through um, a prayer like a mantra that you basically say to yourself and it's kind of like uh, 
it's like the prototype of us moving towards serving the divine love presence within each and every one of us through the illumined seed of life instead of focusing on this fallen aspect and basically the fallen masculine, right? So he used the words. I'm going to just lovingly affirm them and you can write them down or just feel them in your heart. He said these words to me and the words were, I no longer try to please the fallen masculine. I am now pleased with myself within the presence of divine love. Thank you, beloved God, one and only. God is our Lord. God is the liberator of all life. God is all life. And all the looming beings, hail and glory and victory to all of you, to all of us here. And to all of you, humans working towards your illumination and your own Elohim roots, your divine ancestry, thank you for being here with me as always with such courage and devotion to this path and with love, wisdom, and power. Thank you for watching and listening with your heart. Bye for now. Jacob.